from the Channel 6 studios, it's AM Philadelphia with your host, Elizabeth Starr and Wally Kennedy. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you with us. I'm Wally Kennedy. And I'm Elizabeth Starr. Among other things we will have on our program this morning, Frank Zappa will be here to talk about whether rock lyrics should be rated, also in honor of the fact that it's Halloween. We will talk to some people who believe that the... Rock star Frank Zappa and the question of ratings for rock music, next. One of the, uh, one of the biggest controversies in the country right now has to do with the form of music that we, most of us, grew up on, rock and roll. And how far is too far, and when are lyrics too strong in terms of their content? Uh, it is something that is, even as we speak, being debated in the halls of Congress. Some say they have gone too far already. Others say, look, there's a First Amendment. You don't have to buy it if you don't want to. Why don't we give you an example of some of the things that really are those things that are getting under the, the collars of people who would like to change the system. First, I want to show you a piece of video from a sh song by Sheena Easton called Sugar Walls. And I'll tell you why people are getting hot about it. Let's take a look. I don't think you need a PhD to figure out, <laughs> you know, how it goes. Is that too far? Is that too far? And is that something that uh, your kids ought not to be exposed to? Or if, in fact, just to be advised that that kind of lyrical content is in an album? I don't know. That's the debate. We want to get you in on the telephone. We've got an audience that is very anxious to talk about this. And they are very pleased to have, as we are, Frank Zappa with us this morning. Hey. He is... Uh, <laughs> Somebody who has not only been a fixture in American popular music for about 20 years now, but also has kind of come to the forefront of American musicians and has taken a pretty bold stand about this stuff. Also with us this morning is Cal Rudman. He is the publisher of the Friday Morning Quarterback, certainly one of the more respected people in uh, the music industry. Also comes to this discussion as a background as a teacher, master's degree, he's got a child, Frank's got four. Um, <laughs> Get on it, Cal. Three more. Come on. <laughs> okay. Sheena Easton's Sugar Walls. What's wrong with going into a record store and seeing a little teeny sticker up in the corner that says R on it? Well, whose R is it? First of all, why would you want somebody else to decide for you what that song means, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, or too hot for you or your children? Why do you need to have somebody decide that for you? Are you too lazy? <laughs> okay, but let's say the... I mean, not you, of course, but... No, I mean, certainly, yeah, but Frank. I'm a hard worker, Frank. Uh, but what about the, the fact that parents are busy? I remember when I was listening to rock and roll, my parents couldn't police every single uh, uh, lyric line that was in the songs. You've been in music for a long time. Has it gone too far, do you think? Are you going to shoot the messenger that brings the bad news? Songs are a reflection of our society. They don't create the society. That's true. You have to remember that. I mean, why is all this talk about policing? What are we policing here? We're talking about words. Remember, sticks and stones can break your bones. Uh, names are not going to hurt you. What is a word going to do? Have you ever heard of a word that could make you go to hell, or is it going to turn you into a maniac? This thing started off about words. I noticed you, the, when these, and I've done a lot of these shows, they always start off with some kind of a videotape, and they have some lyrics on the screen. Ooh, does this scare you? Is this going to make your children? Is this yep. going to make your children go rabid? And uh, if, it, if it weren't for the fact that uh, videos, uh, rock videos exist, I don't think this issue would have gotten very much coverage on television because it makes such a nice little package. You take the rock video, show them some pictures, and you put the Chiron on there, and show them the letters, and then they go, Yeah, well, big issue. Let's make a decision. Okay, do, but do obviously the Congress of the United States agrees. <laughs> You want to know who needs policing? Those guys need policing. Why? Yeah. Why? I'll tell you why. First of all, this matter never should have been heard in a Senate hearing. Why was First it? First of all, well, I'll give you some statistics. First of all, if there is a Senate committee 
wherein it might have been appropriate to hear this particular matter, it should have been Paula Hawkins' committee for family, uh, child, uh, drug, alcohol. Mm -hmm. And apparently they originally wanted to have it there. And I heard that maybe their committee was busy, but it wasn't so busy that Paula couldn't attend this particular meeting. This matter was heard before the Senate Commerce, Science, and Transportation Committee. Does that sound appropriate? For one reason it is, because five of the, of the husbands of these wives were sitting on that committee. You're talking about a stacked deck as okay. a fact-finding committee. Let me just interject one thing. The, the, the wives to which you are making reference are part of the founding uh, people in a group called the Parents Music Resource Center. They are the congressional wives who got this thing rolling. Right. They were invited to be part of this program. We told them exactly what the format was going to be. They chose to decline the offer to be on this program with Frank Zappa. Um, there is a point of view, though, that, that has to be heard. Um, okay, so you be them, all right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> not, it's not my job. Okay. All right, well, I'll be them. It's, it's, it just it's, leaves up like this. Okay, I'll be Tipper. <laughs> Okay, but you're, attack you're attacking the personality in, in uh, no, not No, I'm attacking saying. the sleeves. <laughs> okay, you say the video has gone too far. The problem is the video, as Frank stated. Without the video, this issue could have not been brought to the fore. And there's been an unwritten code in visual media that you never violate. Well, it's been violated, showing sadomasochism on the screen. And uh, the directors, uh, they got their head and they went too far. And they put a lot of stuff on a screen, and these images have exploded on screens across the country, mm -hmm. and it's been devastating. Okay, but what are we trying to do? Are we trying to legislate change for MTV, or trying to legislate change for the recording industry? They're two separate entities. There isn't going to be any legislation, I believe Senator Danforth already said. There will be no legislation. That, but here's the problem. Yeah. Danforth opened the hearing by saying, the purpose of this hearing is to ventilate the issue. We do not want legislation. Danforth said that. He was immediately followed by Hollings, who said if he could find a way to do away with it constitutionally, he would. Let me ask you about. He does want legislation. Your bottom line on this is you think that Congress is investigating and putting up a lot of smoke because they're trying to humor their wives? No, it's worse than that. There's this, this is involved with a bill uh, uh, that it, it's known by several names. In the, in the House, it is called H.R. 2911. And in the Senate, it's called the Matthias Bill. And then there's another bill which resembles it closely, and I don't know the name of that one. But yesterday, the Matthias Bill was heard in the Senate. And this is the notorious blank tape tax. It means a lot of money for the record industry. And the record industry humored the ladies to begin with simply because the ladies were married to men who would influence record industry legislation. Okay. okay. Let's go to the audience. You've got a lot of people who came here to see Frank and get involved in this issue, Liz. This is a record store owner. I'm curious, what would happen if the records were rated R, P, G, X? What would happen to sales? Uh, I don't think it would be uh, hurt. I think that uh, most kids, they're uh, looking for that, and uh, it might even be uh, something good for <laughs> certain sales. But, do, you, do you feel like uh, asking kids to whip out their age cards to, uh, to justify the, the fact that they would want to buy an R-rated record? Uh, no, def that's it's very unfair. There's no reason to have to do anything like that. I, if a parent doesn't want a kid to uh, have a record, they should know. They should have to listen to the record themselves and okay. decide that. There's no reason to. Is there any reason, though, to believe that a parent is going to, you know, grab all the new albums that come into a house and say, "Let me listen to them first? There's no reason to, why a parent should. Why should a parent be afraid of a, a child hearing a song like "Sugar Walls"? Okay. <laughs> Some hold, hold parents the... would say that it uh, it promotes uh, sexual activity. That's why. And they don't wish to have their children active sexually at a certain age. Well, there's no scientific evidence to support that. The, the person would hear Sheena Easton say sugar walls. If a person is sexually ignorant in a young age and they hear references to sugar walls, they don't know what a sugar wall is yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so well, what's the, the deal? being insisting that this was a dirty record and I still don't know any of the lyrics to Louie Louie. And neither did the Congress when they listened to it. Do you know that it went as far as the Congress listening to Louie Louie? Originally? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And after 20 years they still don't know what the lyric is. Right. Stay with us as AM Philadelphia continues. Have the lyrics and popular songs gone too far and if they have, what should we do about it? We'll get your phone input, more audience input is Frank Zappa, Cal Rudman continue on AM Philadelphia. We'll go away. <laughs>
popular songs gone too far? Some people say yes because of uh, videos like the ones you're about to see and songs like the one you're about to see. This is one of the most popular entertainers in the world right now. His name is Prince. And uh, here are some lyric lines from a song called Darling Nikki that have got some people upset. Take a look. You a girl named Nikki, I guess you could say she was a sex fiend. I met her in a hotel lobby, masturbating with a magazine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to the audience and get some reaction. Well, I just uh, wanted to mention it's a fascinating coincidence that uh, we had the incident in the Springfield Mall that we did last night because a lot of this attention to the rock lyrics was brought back to the public eye a couple months ago following the capture of the Night Stalker in Los Angeles. Uh, Ramirez, his name was, was an ACDC and a heavy metal fan yeah. who claimed that the lyrics to these songs were what inspired him to go out and kill people. And Do you think that was a probable situation, that he actually could have been inspired by a record? It's a possible situation, but then, uh, then again, Beethoven's Ninth was supposed to inspire ultraviolence ultra in, a, in a movie, Clockwork Orange. So it, anything can supposedly inspire someone to do something in the name of. Okay. Okay, we got some more Let's people here. Dan Duber uh, from Bridgeport. We love you, Frank. Um, I think that when they put restrictions on an artist, they stifle their creativity. And this is going to cause like a lot of problems for artists to keep producing good material for people to listen to. Okay. Um, I like to say they said they're going to rate records, but why don't they rate the, um, commercials with the Citrus Hill Get Your Juices Flowing? That's just as bad as Sugar Walks. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to be able to look at a glass of orange juice the same way again. Let's take some phone calls. Good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead. Good morning. I have a comment to make. I feel that, first of all, these lyrics shouldn't even be put on the record. They should not? No. Okay. Why? Why? Because I feel it goes from the records to the videos. And I feel that society is affected because it affects the morals. And if it's okay to sing and it's okay to see, it's okay to do. Okay. Frank? Well, I don't agree. I think that is um, not the right way to analyze the situation. And you have your standards, and other people have, have their standards. And one of the things that makes this country great is you're supposed to be able to, within bounds where you don't hurt somebody else, live by your own standards. Okay, let me ask you your question at the beginning. Um, who would you have listen to the records and decide this is too far? I. Well, I think maybe there should be some kind of a committee for him. Who would be on that committee, though? Pardon me? Who would be on the committee? Be on, I, I don't know. I, I just feel it, it's just, they know that these type of words should not be on records. That's not true. First of all, you should, when you talk about a committee, that means that you're going to give up part of your rights and let somebody else decide something for you that you would decide for yourself. Let's say you support forming the committee. Let's say their standards aren't stringent enough for you. You've asked for the committee, and they haven't gone far enough, and then you're stuck with it. Why don't you make the decision yourself? Uh, remember, nobody ships this directly to your home. These records are something that you make a decision to buy. You can also make a decision not to buy them. And as far as listening to it on the radio or on television, there's a big knob that lets you turn it to someplace else if you don't like it. <laughs> OK, okay let's, uh, let's take another phone call. Good morning. You're on in Philadelphia. Go ahead. Good morning. Um, I think that, firstly, it's rather absurd to suggest that nothing affects nothing. Everything affects everything. Like, the commercials affect us. The, the music certainly affects us, um, as do books, as do magazines. And the question is, Where's creativity? Don't turn that up. <laughs> right. Somebody's trying to be creative in your house, I guess. Um, don't, don't suggest, I mean, it's, it's, it's an absurd suggestion, um, as I said before, that, that we're not affected by these things, and certainly young people who are very impressionable. But even further, the question is, what is so creative about writing lyrics about sexual perversion and explicit acts? I mean, there's nothing creative about that. Sex has been around, obviously, for a long time. We were all here to attest to that. <coughs> and, um, what people want to do or do in the privacy of their cars, homes, backyards, geez, wherever they do it, is really a personal choice. Do I need to be subject to, to your personal perversions? I have my own. <laughs> 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 well, uh, okay, let's friend. talk about it a little. <laughs> <laughs> 
But as an artist, though, it, is there not a degree of truth to what she said? Is, is it not a, a cop-out to do sexually explicit lyrics? Are there not other things to write about that are just as creative? Well, first of all, I like what he said, that you don't want to go and shoot the messenger that brings you the bad news. Songs reflect what is going on in the society. If you don't like what is described in the songs, then maybe you want to take a look at the reasons why the society is the way it is. It is not the way it is because somebody wrote a song about it. It's the way it is because you saved a couple of bucks and made your schools cheap and crummy. And you didn't pay the teachers enough, so you got these really bad teachers in there. And then you chinced on this, and you chinced on that, and the quality of life goes down and down and down while you told yourself you were being frugal and uh, you know, financially responsible, and the quality of life goes down. And then, of course, you got too busy to take care of your own kids in your own home. You, know, you want, the, want things to be better? There's a little bit that you can do yourself as an individual. Don't turn it over to a committee, whether it's Tipper or anybody else's committee. You know, take care of it yourself. You don't need the government involved in this. Let me get another quick comment from the audience. Well, just a comment from me. It occurs to me that the fastest way to make kids stop listening to rock records is to sit down and listen to them with your with children. Your yeah, right. Because kids never yeah. want to do anything with their parents right. anyway. Yeah, I'd just like to say, like, in relationship with the first caller about the words, I think basically it's the consumer and the parents themselves. They misinterpret the song. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really don't know what the song is about except through the songwriter's own head, the way he writes, like, you know, in your music or, or other artists' music. You have to know exactly what is going through his mind into the music. When, when, what about when it's as sp explicit as, as the masturbation line in the Prince song? Uh, well, well, still, I mean, you have to look at it through a different eye. You just can't take it as a... This is dirty. This is that. I mean, it's basically the way a human person is. Some well, of this is accepted. Is some of it's illegal. not. I mean, so what are you going to do? Go and put handcuffs on people in case they get an urge when they hear the song? Okay. Okay. But wait a minute, Frank. Do you listen to when when Moon Moon Unit and Dweezil and your other children were growing up? Did you listen to everything that they listened to? Of course. You don't not. have time. Well, it's not that I don't have time. I'm not interested in it. Besides that, I don't have any terror of it, and I don't think they do either. And some parents do, but the fact is. Those parents, if they really are afraid of their children hearing some little weird thing slipping by, how about jazz with no words to it, or instrumental music of other types, or classical music? You don't have to, uh, if <clears throat> the parent is not at the mercy of the child where the child demands that the, blindly the parent must go to the store and buy Darling Nikki, okay, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. The parent still has the 898 in the pocket when it's, uh, you're talking about young children. And they can choose not to buy that stuff or maybe even suggest that their kids read a book. Thought-provoking. Cal Rudman, Frank Zappa, my thanks to the both of you and, and certainly to our audience who came down uh, to see you guys talk about this. Thank you both very right. much. Continue. Right. To Stay with us. As AM Philadelphia continues.